Thomas Jake here to do a Hydra Dip tutorial featuring a camouflage dip pattern. And the star of the video is going to be a Busby Predator. This is an older one. I'm going to modify it as well. But as is, you can see, I'm starting with a base coat of black. The reason for black instead of my typical white or gray is that this will tone down the colors and give them more of a muted look, you know, following along with the camo idea. Now, the colors I'm using to do this are right here. As you can see, I like my Rust-Oleum American Accents. It sticks well, and it actually sprays well in water. We're going to use the Satin Eden as our kind of hunter green color. I'm going to use a warm caramel as a good, good brown, almost like a clayish kind of brown. And I'm going to mix in some gray, which is the slate. And... Yes, this is a ultra matte. It does work very well to stick after spraying. I'm going to show you what my technique is. So take all the caps off. Okay, now before we actually get you into doing your own dip, let's take a quick look at some tips here uh, on the water specifically. My experience has shown me that a average temperature of around lukewarm, which would be roughly... 75 to 80 85 degrees has worked best colder and the paint has issues with uh, it being too cold where it doesn't adhere properly doesn't swirl right too warm and it dries so fast you won't get a swirl pattern instead you'll basically almost get like a decal effect where it just whatever's on the surface of the water just sticks to the blaster that way and a lot of times it's not going to be a very nice smooth even appearance but remember, lukewarm water, which I pretty much let the water sit out in, as this is a tall garbage can with a lid, and get warm under the sun. And you can do that yourself or just use a mixture of warm and cold water and get it to be around about 75, 80 degrees. That's been my personal effect. And I use the Rust-Oleum series the uh, American Accents. This has proven to be very reliable for adhering to plastic or metal. I have I have actually done metal with this as well. But those are my tips. Lukewarm water, use a good paint, and make sure you have a good base primer. The lighter the color of your base, I will use white or gray to make my color stand out. If I'm using a bright color, for instance, you guys have seen my blaster is painted in this uh, Rustolian American Accents Seaside Gloss or the real orange color. I will do a white base coat so that these colors really pop. If you do a dark gray or a black, you can get your colors to tone down. As I'm about to show you with this camo color. I used a black base coat, four layers to really tone down the camouflage. Because you want camo to be kind of a matte, kind of earthy color, not bright and bold. But we're going to go on and actually show you the dipping. Here we go. Shake all the cans. And we're ready to go. We'll do a steady spray. Follow it up. And then again, and then again, I'm going to keep doing alternating. I want a lot of green in this, so it, your pattern will be dictated by how long you spray. Certain colors will get bigger uh, amounts on the swirl. And I do want green to be the dominant with a little touch of gray here and there, but a lot of green. And doing this at fall time because it seems like the right time to do it. And then if you want to kind of do more of one color, you can easily just do this. And as you see, we just have a little bit of gray here and there. Now, we'll take the blaster. And for this pattern, I do actually have the shell halves together. Most of my, most of mine, I don't do that. What we're going to do is we're going to stick it in and then twist as we go down. That's how I get my swirl pattern. So we'll go actually go down 
and we're going to spin it onto it. And that's where you can see, as long as I keep my hands out of the way, you can see it's swirling. And the more you spin it, the more of a swirl you're going to get. And then I take my trusty stick here, and I will actually put it underneath this, and down under the water we go. And this time I got sponge brush to brush this away. You want to get rid of that so you don't double coat it. If you double coat it, you kind of get some odd patterns sometimes. So push all this to the sides, get it mostly clear, and then we can pick it up. Let me take that and I'm going to turn it over. And here is our camo color dip. Let that really focus in. See what you guys think of that. That is a camo color dip. I'll let me flip it over. Ooh, I really like I really like the stock section there. But this is this is how I dip my blasters. It is that simple. I had four very thin coats of black as the base coat, and you can see the black is still showing through, which is why I didn't spray too heavy. I wanted some black to still be able to come through, and there is some gray in there as well. But typically, I'll do like a three-color spray, and you can use latex or whatever glove you want to use if you want to avoid getting your hands dirty, but as you see, I don't care. I just scrub with SOS pads when I'm done. But yeah, that's that dip is done. Now, I will hang this to dry, and then it's going to get four coats of a top quality clear coat. I actually use a Rust-Oleum clear. It's their premium version, and I have found it works really well. But you'll actually see this blaster in an upcoming video once I brass it and uh, redo the seals on it, because this one needed some work. But yeah, th this is how you hide your dip. So we'll keep this short and sweet, and I will see you guys with this blaster in a future video. This is Mongus Jake. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.